Hello everyone and welcome to yet another College Dunia session Thoughtful Leaders. This is a platform where we connect with leaders from different colleges and universities and understand their views on higher education. This is an initiative to bridge the gap between the vision of top management and aspiring students. Today we have with us Mr. Sanjay Badode, founder of Vijay Bhumi University. Mr. Badode is a graduate from Birla Institute of Technology and Sciences Pelani with honors in math and electronic engineering. Mr. Padode founded DataLine and Research Technologies Limited to launch for the very first time nationwide online access to financial information via India Online in 1993. After serving 22 years in financial technology and information technology, Mr. Padode chose to dedicate his life to the cause of education and took over as the secretary of Center for Development, Developmental Education a not-for-profit society which runs IFIM Business School. With his entrepreneurial spirit, in 2018, Mr. Padode founded India's first liberal professional university, Vijay Bhumi University at Karchat in Greater Mumbai region. Welcome to the platform, sir. My pleasure to be part of it. So, sir, uh, my first question to you is, as a founder of uh, Vijay Bhumi University, can you throw some... Uh, a light on its genesis and what was the idea behind the establishment of this university? So, Vijay Bhumi University is a liberal professional university. And uh, I would like to explain the format of a liberal professional university. In our country, we've had a very, very uh, streamed format of education. So, in your 10th standard, one would get into a science, commerce or an art stream. From science, you can go to engineering, medicine, and live some options. Commerce, you have some options, and art, similarly, you have some options. There is no way from an arts guy to come to commerce. There's no way for a science guy to go, I mean, or arts guy to come to engineering. That doesn't happen anymore. And that suited the country very well till we were a non liberalized nation. The moment we got liberalized, and the moment IT became our main stronghold as far as the world's perception of India is concerned. Okay, we became, we came in the front line of being, driving the change that's happening to the world. So we are the guys who are creating the new apps. We are the guys who are creating the new startups. We are the guys who are adding to the volatility, uncertainty and complexity and ambiguity of the world, the entire VUCA system. Now, when you look at this VUCA world, you cannot have an individual who is programmed to just do one thing because when you are looking at complexity volatility to handle those kind of problems you got to have the context right you got to have a broader context you need to know that you know if i make this change where all the impact would be and therefore a broader understanding of the context would give you a more robust and an accurate solution so for that how do I create a professional, say an engineer, who understands the context of law? Or how do I create an engineer who understands the context of, context of business? So to do that, we went down exploring and figured out that the only uh, system that allows that is the liberal arts education framework. In liberal arts, it's assumed that the student who's joining the program is not very sure about what the student wants to pursue. He's in the mode of discovery. So he tests, he shops, he checks, and then he decides and curates a degree. Now we wanted to bring that same flexibility into professional education. So what we have done is when a student joins Vijay Bhumi University, first of all, the student is not admitted to a program. The student is admitted to the university. And the student has the flexibility to make the choice of the degree up till the second year. So in the first two years, we call it the discovery phase. What the student does is he has to do courses from various schools that are offering various types of degrees. So he has to do courses from, from humanities, performing arts. He has to do courses from business. He has to do courses from law and society. has to do courses from design. has to do courses from science, data science or whatever. Okay. So he takes a broad based set of courses and during these two years makes a choice that look, I want to pursue engineering. And then there's a clear cut laid out path for you to graduate the professional degree 
these are the kind of credit load you will have to take to cover in your four year or five year tenure tenure at Vijay Bhumi University. So that is the format. So therefore, we are using the liberal arts framework to deliver a professional degree, and therefore it becomes a liberal professional university. So that's new, and that's the first of its kind in the country. It's also possible that a student may choose after the second year that I don't want any one of these professional degrees. I yet want to pass out with a bachelor of arts with a major in business or a bachelor of arts in a in information science. That is possible with a degree as well. When we say a professional degree, it's an engineering degree, it's a law degree, it's a business degree, it's a design degree. When I talk about an arts degree. Yes, you would do the same coursework, but may not be to that in depth and that specialization which you would do in a professional degree. So that's the essence of Vijay Bhumi University. Thank you so much for sharing the the genesis and uh, the idea behind uh, the formation of this university and how different it is uh, vis a vis the orthodox uh, system of education present. So uh, moving forward, sir, can you uh, you you've been a a part of various. Uh, leadership roles and uh, so what is your philosophy of leadership and how would you describe your leadership style so see i am i don't consider myself from a very old generation but i don't consider myself from today's generation as well so i'm somewhere in between all right so i have seen leadership transform i actually graduated when the world i mean our country was not yet liberalized okay i graduated in the year 89 and we got our liberalization in 91 and it though we got a liberalization it was not a digital liberalization it took 3 to 4 years for old habits to change and people to change so i have observed various types of leadership patterns in the earlier times it was very high amount of command and control very hierarchical where you know it was a very top down approach all the decisions were made by the one man on top but when you go to scale when you increase your business to scale and you expect one man to take decisions of so many problems that are happening that kind of a format cannot work so the entire format has to be empower make people responsible and accountable for their own doings and that is my style of reader the leadership so if you look at the construct of the vijay bhumi university as well we have five schools each school is run by a dean and the dean has his own governing council the dean has his own board of studies there's a academic council that bridges all the schools together but each school is completely autonomous the only obligation of each school is to offer those level 1 level 2 programs to all students they cannot discriminate the offering of their program but they can discriminate in offering of their degree they can only give the degree of the professional degree of the school if the student completes all the credits that are required for an engineering degree or a data science degree or a design degree but they cannot disallow a student from choosing a course of data science even though he is doing a humanities course so that is the only restriction otherwise they are free to build their own research they are free to do their own curriculum they are free to set their own faculty so that's my style of uh, leadership it's about creating a framework empowering the person to operate within the framework and trusting the person to have you know to be able to deliver what he is able to deliver and create a very very strong database review mechanism which is self you know it's it's self telling for the person to know whether he's performing or not performing doesn't need to be told from the top if everything is automated data is coming to you you know whether you're doing well or not right so somebody doesn't have to tell you you're do not doing well in today's world technology helps you so it's a lot of technology driven leadership and it's more of transformational So if I have to give you a simple analogy my analogy would be I am the vision for the university but not the delivery of the vision So I am the, if I were to drive a car I am the guy looking outside the windscreen not inside the car what's happening in the inside the car is to be done by various people I just set the comfort level the ambience and provide them the with the tools and the uh, necessary resources to actually deliver so that's it's very inclusive in nature it's very transformational in nature it's not transactional in nature 
thank you for sharing those insights sir and and like you said rightly it's it's a very inclusive uh, style of leading a team uh, stemming on uh, from what you said uh, so how is the curriculum being uh, modified to be in sync with the changing trends so we were very fortunate the national education policy we we conceived this about 4 years ago and probably dr kasturi rangan also conceived the same thing 4 years ago it so happened that when our university came into play the national education policy to came to play and the national education policy is practically saying everything that we are saying so there is zero misalignment between what we are thinking and they are thinking they are thinking of a credit bank that makes my life so easy because in our university we have already got about seven partnership with top schools in the world so we got uh, collaboration with state university of new york ESCP Europe University of Wollongong Australia Newcastle uh, University in Australia we have with University of Texas Arlington we have with Paris School of Business ESC Rand whole lot of partnerships which we were you know worried upon how will we do credit transfers and there comes national education policy saying credit bank is allowed and makes work very easy for us so yes we are 100% aligned with the policy i think the policy is very future looking and uh, because we were we were future looking so obviously i will say the policy is uh, future looking and it's absolutely aligned so i'm not worried about the policy perspective continuing this discussion on nep uh, so what do you uh, see are some of the biggest challenges with respect to the implementation of the policy uh, you have uh, you have had the same uh, idea of uh, credit transfers and uh, multiple entry and exit and that is why you created the liberal format so what are the biggest challenges do you see with respect to uh, the implementation on a whole and how it is going to impact the entire education system the biggest implementation is the mindset of the people see we have we have come many years since our education system was there and the the people have already you know in their minds they know how to deliver a degree there is a certain set process for them to go out of that box is going to be a big challenge i think w- what will be required is the new generation faculty that will come in that can really drive the execution of this the only ch- challenge is going to be faculty 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 in this nothing else i think infrastructure doesn't change technology is actually making infrastructure redundant that technology is making teaching very easy but what the challenge is going to be are people adapting technology are they able to uh, leverage what is happening and are they able to so what people can do in such an open system is that in an open system you can yet run a siloed system so when i say i can yet continue on with my bachelor of degree art degree in nep nothing will go wrong with it a traditional degree can agree because nep has opened it up more so you can yet be in running a closed path right whether people have the mindset to use the uh, you know use the openness that's available with the policy is going to be what is uh, something that needs to be tested by time thank you sir thank you sir uh, so coming back to something which is again uh, hit all of us uh, so due to covid 19 students have become uh, skeptical about uh, the final year placements Uh, what are your thoughts on that and how uh, is vijay boom university uh, addressing the whole obstacle see the uh, covid 19 has impacted everybody and everything so it's not only impacted placements it's impacted the institution how we deliver it's impacted the mindset of the student where he's thinking whether you know so a student was brought up by the parents saying that beta tu engineer banega ya doctor banega today covid 19 has happened and the student is wondering uh, you know he's got that 6 month of time of the lockdown where he's wondering should i become engineer or should i become doctor so a lot of thing and even the father is thinking and the parents are thinking so this is a moment where i can only tell you one thing that the old normal is dead i cannot tell you that this is the new normal we have to create the new normal and one of the things that has died with the old normal is the practice of placements so everything that was done in education was basically targeted towards placement that why what was important in choosing a university was placement package kitna hai not main kitna seekhunga the objective of a university is to deliver education not give you a job if you get good education and good learning you have ensured yourself for getting a good job for life 
right? So I think that practice needs to change, and that will come in. And when you look at COVID nineteen, that is creating that phenomena. Today, people are working from home. Today, people will start learning from home. People will start interning from home. Right, so the environment is completely. When you say placement, what happens in placement? I am sitting at home, learning from university. Then you get placed in a company. What happens next day when you get placed? You are sitting at home and working for a company. Nothing has changed for you. You are here sitting at home, just that you are doing some other work. So there is a lot of transformation that's uh, taken place because of COVID nineteen. But for me, it's a good thing that's happened in terms of disrupting. What it was supposed to deliver. So, from that perspective, I think I'm hoping that people will rethink. Opportunities will come back. Economies will bounce. People will start recruiting. I'm sure the students will get jobs. This is a temporary phase which we need to overcome and adapt to the new normal and create the new normal. And new normal will again come back. We will eat food. We will we'll do everything that we did in the past. Maybe in a different way, but everything that we did is going to happen. thank you sir thank you sir um and uh, you know stemming on to uh, you know being a part of the new normal uh, are you planning to expand the number of courses being offered at the university going in the future so like i told you we are starting with five schools one is a uh, school of data science school of design school of business school of law and school of humanities and performing arts we intend to add schools of uh, hospitality and tourism we intend to add schools of uh, engineering so as but our addition of school depends on the ability to hire faculty good faculty which aligns with our uh, so first we get the dean then we start the school rather than first start the school and then get the dean so we are basically looking for faculty telling that if you have a great idea a great program to run you can please join vijay bhumi university and we will give you the runway to build a nice program in a very independent and autonomous manner so we are all out looking for the best faculty to come and join us to get the deliver the best academic experience for students so we will be adding programs thank you sir thank you that that brings in a lot of hope for uh, uh, you know aspiring aspiring students with respect to uh, new courses uh, your final thoughts sir what would be your suggestion or or a message to the students who are um, aspiring to be a part of vijay bhumi you know? the only message i would like to give them is this is the place to discover your passions this is the place to make your career and to make your life full of happiness uh you know prosperity and also uh, meaningful in the sense that we are not talking about this whole career business is about making money we are talking about this whole education business is about enabling the society enabling yourself as an individual to contribute to humanity and live and earn the gratification that the contribution brings in i think that is the real award that each of you the student of vijay bhumi university should be looking for not looking for a package that will follow in any case that's what we have to look at thank you so much sir thank you so much for sharing your vision and sharing uh, deep insights about how the university uh, is catering to the needs of the society thank you so much for being a part of this session sir it was wonderful having you here Pleasure meeting you, Nitin, and thank you. My pleasure.